Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the official study manual for T's, 2021 edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we'll solve some problem dealing with the concept of order of operations. Something that we've been working on for two days. We worked on it on day number seven and day number six. And today is our third and the last day on the topic. Order of operations, we go, we're going to do some problems that appear on page number 138. Problem number one we did yesterday, which had four parts to it. Today we'll pick up from problem number two. If at the end of the video you find it helpful and you, would and you decide that you would like to work with me, you can always get hold of me by sending me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com. Also, if you decide that you need more practice on this topic, topic of order of operation on PEMDAS, you can watch two more videos. On my, on my channel you will find a series of videos labeled as Basic Math. Just type in my name, Keshwani, Keshwani Basic Math, Day 46 and Day 47. Those two videos where you'll find, as I said, more problems dealing with the same topic. Let's get going, shall we? Number two. It says three plus two times six minus four. What do we do first? We have addition, we have subtraction, we have multiplication. What do we do first? We do multiplication first, obviously. Three plus twelve minus four. And after that part is done, we just have addition and subtraction. It doesn't matter which one do first. We can go in any order you want. 3 plus 12 is 15, 15 minus 11, 15 minus 4 is 11. Voila. Quite simple, quite straightforward. The answer is going to be C to this problem. Number 13. It says 15 plus 2 times 5 over 11 minus 24 divided by 4. So when we have a situation like this, when something is given to us in a form of a fraction, we treat the bottom and the top separately, the numerator and the denominator separately, as if they were two separate quantities. And that's because they are two separate quantities. Evaluate them separately. Once we know what the numerator is equal to, once and then once we know what the denominator is equal to, we can stick one on top of the other and, and, and be done with it. But uh, don't try to do anything in between. Just keep them separate from the from the beginning till the end. So we're going to treat this thing as top quantity by itself. We have addition and multiplication. We're going to do multiplication first on the top. So we have top 15 plus 2 times 5 is 10. Now we take care of the bottom. We have 11 minus and we have Nick subtraction and division. Obviously division is going to come before subtraction. So we have 11 minus 24 divided by 4 is 6. Now we take care of the top. 15 plus 10 is 25. 11 minus 6 is 5. And therefore the answer of this problem is 5, which is answer choice B. Let's take a look at number 4. Number 4 says 50 minus 8 times 3 in the parentheses plus 9 plus 6 over 3. So again, when something like this happens, this is like a fraction has to be taken care of first by itself. So let's, let's begin here. 50 minus multiplication here which is 24 and now we take care of the fraction by itself is 9 minus 6 which is 15 15 divided by 3 is 5 if you if you want you can just write down 5 in one step and be done with it but if you feel comfortable just do it in two steps 9 plus 6 is 15 over 3 and then continue in the next step so we end up with 50 minus 24 plus 5. And that's what it is. 50, 50 minus 24 
50 minus 25 would have been exactly 25. Since we're subtracting 24, not 25, one less than that, therefore the answer is going to be 26. Also, this part is 26. 26 plus 5 is 31. Now, this thing that I put underneath it has no significance. It has nothing, nothing to do with order of operation. It's purely for the convenience. I did these two first because it makes the math easier. But you, you could have done all of this in one shot. That was number four. Let's do number five. Number five says 17 plus 18 minus 2 times 3 over 6. I believe. Yes. So again, we take care of the fraction first, the top separately from the bottom. So in the top we have 18 minus 2 times 3, we have next subtraction and multiplication. We're going to do multiplication first. We're going to take care of this quantity first. So we're going to have 18 minus 6 over 6. 18 minus 6 is 12 over 6, which is 2. And this just comes down. We have 17 plus 2. The answer is 19. The answer is 19. Do you understand? That was number 5. That was the end of the that was the end of the end of the problems on that page. There are only five problems, but we're going to do a few more. And these are not in the book, these are bonus problems. Don't, don't try to look for them. And what I want you to do is as soon as I finish putting this problem on the blackboard, immediately I want you to pause the video, do it yourself, and then compare your work against the work that we'll do together. I think you'll get more out of it that way. So here we go. 18 divided by 6 times 4 minus 8 plus 3 times 5 minus 9. Okay, that's it. Post the video and see what you can do. Okay, so here we go. First thing first, first the parenthesis. 18 divided by 6 is 3. 3 times 4 minus 8 plus 3 times 5 minus 9. And here we have two situations of multiplication here and here. If you wanted to, if you wanted to, you could have done. If, we, if you wanted to, you could do both of this multiplication in one step instead of doing it in two steps. It, it makes no difference because whatever the result here is has no impact on what goes on down here. Similarly, whatever the result here is has no impact on anything else. So we, we can do this multiplication, which is 12 minus 8 plus 15 minus 9. There you go. And the next step I'm going to do is, is purely for convenience. It has nothing to do with this thing. I'm just going to break it up into 2 and 2 so it's easier to do it. That's 4 and that's a 6. So that's 10. Instead of trying to do all 4 at once. Do you understand? So the answer here is 10. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Again, do it yourself first. As I said already, 60 divided by 3 times 5, close parenthesis, times 12. Let's see what we can do. So here we have parenthesis within a parenthesis. And what, so then what do we do? We do the innermost first. We do the innermost parenthesis first. That's the, that's the inner one. So let's do that first. So we're going to have 60 divided by 15 times 12. Now we take care of this parenthesis. 60 divided, by 60 divided by 15 is 4. How do we know that? How do we know that? We don't. Let's do it out, shall we? Let's divide top and bottom by 5. 6 says 1, 5. After we take away 5 from the 6, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? 1 goes and joins a 0 and becomes 10. And 10 has 2 5s. Since we divided the top by 5, we must divide the bottom by 5. If you divide 15 by 5, we get a 3. Let's divide top and bottom by 3 now. 3 goes away, becomes a 1, and 12 has 4 3s. There you go. The answer is 4. answer is 4. Of course it's 4 because 15 times 4 is 60. How do, how do we know 15 times 4 is 60? Well, it's very simple. Whenever you need to multiply something by 4, 
don't try to multiply it by 4. Double it and then double it again. So if I have 15, if I double it, if you, 15, if you double the 15 you get 30 and if you double it again you get 60. That tells us 15 times 4 is 60. Do you understand? So that's a 4 times 12 is 48. Here you go. And how do we know that 12 times 4 is 48? It's again, it's very simple. 4 times 10 is 40, and 4 times 2 is 8. That's all. Number 7. That was number 7. Number 8. Number 8 says, negative 7, 6 minus 9 plus 3. A negative 7 in the front. Negative 7. Okay, let's do the parentheses first. 6 minus 3 is 3. Something has gone wrong. Something has gone berserk. Oh, 6 minus 3. 6 minus 9 is not 3. 6 minus 9 is going to be negative 3. 9 minus 6 would have been 3. 6 minus 9 is negative 3. Because I knew something had gone berserk because the script wasn't folding, wasn't unfolding as I had planned. Do you understand? Because believe it or not, sometimes I know what's going on or what is supposed to go on. So that's negative 3. And then we have positive 3. Well, negative 3 and positive 3 is a 0. What kind you ask? A big fat one. A big fat 0 times anything is going to be 0. That was number 7. To which the answer turned out to be a big fat 0. Number 8. Oh, that was number 8. Let's do number 9. Number 9 was, number 9 is 7 times 6 divided by 3 times Let's see what, what goes on here, okay? Pay attention. So we do the parenthesis first. 7 times 6 is 42. Divided by 6. 3 times 2 is 6. 42 divided by 6 is going to be 7. Okay, because, because, 7 6 are, because 7, 6 are 42. Let's do the very last one. I want, you to compare, I want you to compare the number 10 with number 9 that we just finished. So here's number 10. Here is number 10. What do you suppose is the difference between these two situations? What do you suppose is the difference between these two situations? And hence, the importance of knowing the order of operations. You must go in this order, parenthesis first, then exponent, then multiplication, then division, addition and subtraction. Fem, this is a mnemonic we use, which tells us the proper order of operations. So do this problem yourself, pause the video, do it yourself, and then tell me what do you suppose is between this quantity and that quantity. So what is going on here is, listen very carefully, okay? What is going on here is that we're dealing with only two kind of operations. We're simply dealing with multiplications and division. And as you can see here, oh, it's a little bit raised, multiplication and division, they have the same priority. And addition and subtraction, they have the same priority. They have the same priority. In other words, in other words, if you're trying to evaluate some quantity where you look at it and you find that there are a whole bunch of addition and subtraction and nothing else, just addition and subtraction and nothing else, then it makes absolutely no difference which one you do first because they both have the same priority. But then the question is, just to avoid confusion, just to make sure that everything goes the same way with everybody, like for example here, all we have is multiplication and division. And because they have the same priority, which one do I do first? Anybody can do anything first. So the norm is, in this situation, therefore the norm is, always go, always go from left to right. Work your way left to right strictly. Strictly left to right, nothing else. So let's do that. We're going to go strictly left to right. 7 times 6 is 42. Divided by 3, it just comes down, times 2. And we do this next, strictly left to right, 
42 divided by 3 is going to be 14 times 2 and the answer is 28 which is a different answer than the answer that we got here. See that? Here we have 42, 42 divided by 3 is 14 and if you don't want, if you don't believe me we can do it out. 42 divided by 3, how many 3's does 4 have? 4 has 1 3. 4 has 1 3 after we take away 3 from the 4 we have a remainder of 1. That 1 goes and joins the 2 and becomes a 12 and 12 has 4 3's. So 14 times 2 is 28 which is a very different answer than this one. And at, on, an, on that note, and on that note, we'll call it the end of this topic. The topic being the order of operations. That's the end of it. Next time when we meet, we're going to move on to the next chapter, chapter number 22, which talks about comparing numbers. Comparing what they, call, what they like to call rational numbers. Why do they call them rational numbers? Because they want to sound sophisticated. Do you understand? Comparing numbers is just as fine, but if you want to sound sophisticated, you may call them comparing rational numbers. Which is what I do when I'm in a bar and I'm trying to impress a lady. I take out my piece of paper and pencil and I start writing some numbers and if she asks me what am I doing, I tell her I'm comparing rational numbers. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.